Shariputra, Shakyamuni Buddha called again. He is especially fond of his great disciple and thinks to himself, Shariputra has a little wisdom, but he doesn't know what to ask. I will have to tell him. Sutra, Shariputra, what do you think? Why is this Buddha called Amitabha? Shariputra, the brilliance of that Buddha's light is measureless, illumining the lens of the ten directions, everywhere without obstruction. For this reason, he is called Amitabha. Commentary Shariputra should have asked this question himself, but just like you, he had gone off to Samadhi. Whenever I ask you a question, you just stare at me blankly. Why is this Buddha called Amitabha? Amitabha means limitless light. This Buddha's light is immeasurable, so that not a single land in the ten directions is screened from it. From this reason, he is called Amitabha. Sutra, moreover, Shariputra, the life of that Buddha and that of his pupil stands for measureless, limitless Asamkhi Yakampas. For this reason, he is called Amitayus. And Shariputra, since Amitabha realized Buddhahood, ten compass have passed. Commentary Asamkhiya, a Sanskrit word, means limitless number. Amitayus means limitless life. He's been ten great compass or ends. Since he became a Buddha and how many great compass he will live in the future is uncertain. But by this measureless, Asamkhiya compass they will be. Sutra, moreover, Shariputra, that Buddha has measureless, limitless South Hero disciples. All Ahas, their number, incalculable, thus also is the assembly of Bodhisattvas. Shariputra, the realization of the land of ultimate bliss is thus meritoriously adorned. Commentary In Amitabha Buddha's land of ultimate bliss, there are many Sravakas, South Hero disciples, who have certified to the attainment of Nana flows and are all ahas without desire. You can't count them. The assembly of Bodhisattvas is just as big. Sutra Moreover, Shariputra, those living beings born in the land of ultimate bliss, are all Avaibhatika. Among them are many who is this very life will dwell in Buddhahood. Their number is extremely many. It is incalculable and only in measureless, limitless Asamkhiya compass could it be spoken. Commentary Avaibhatika is Sanskrit. It means not retreating or turning away. Those beings who are avaibhatika do not retreat in position, conduct, or thought. Not retreating in position means that they do not retreat to the lesser vehicle. Those of the lesser vehicle who are avaibhatika do not retreat to the position of common men. Not retreating in thought means that every day their thoughts to cultivate increase. Not retreating in conduct means that day by day they, they work harder and never say, I have cultivated for quite a while. It is time to take a rest. Taking a rest is simply retreating and turning away from Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, the utmost right and perfect enlightenment. Those who are Avaibhatika do not retreat in their quest for body. There are many living beings in the land of ultimate bliss who in this very life can step into the position of Buddhahood. Born in a lotus flower, in one life they can realize Buddhahood. How many such beings are there? You could never count them all. They can't be calculated or even estimated. All you can say is that in the meatless, measureless assumption your compass, you could not name them all. Sutra, Shariputra, those living beings who are here should bow. I wish to be born in that country. And why? Those who thus attain are all superior and good people, all gathered together in one place. Shariputra, one cannot have few good roots 
blessings, virtues, and causal connections to attain birth in that land. Commentary Shakyamuni Buddha said, All those living beings who hear the doctrine I teach should also be born in the land of ultimate bliss. Why? Because the Sravakas and Bodhisattvas born there are all superior and good people. Also, you may express the desire to be born in the land of ultimate bliss unless you have good rules, blessings, and virtuous conduct. You won't be able to be reborn there. You must have cultivated all the parameter doors for many lifetimes and this way obtained great good rules, great, great blessings, and great virtue in order to have the opportunity to meet with this wonderful drama. Sutra, Shariputra, if there is a good man or a good woman who has spoken Amitabha and holds the name, whether for one day, two days, three, four, five days, six days, as long as seven days, with a heart unconfused, when this person approaches the end of life, before him will appear Amitabha and all the assembly of holy ones. When the end comes, his heart is without inversion. In Amitabha's land of ultimate bliss, he will attain rebirth, Shariputra. Because I see this benefit, I speak these words. If living beings hear this spoken, they should make the vow, I will be born in that land. Commentary Shariputra said the Buddha, if a good man or woman that is one who holds the five precepts and cultivates the ten good deeds, hears the name Amitabha Buddha, that person should hold to the recitation of Amitabha Buddha's name just like holding something tightly in the hand. Recite the name Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha. Whether for one day, in Chinese, the word weather looks like this rule. If you move the stroke in the middle, it changes into the word suffering, which looks like this who. So you could say suffering for one day, two days, three, four, five days, six days. If you recite the Buddha's name from 4 o'clock in the morning until 10 at night for 7 days, you can reach the level of one heart unconfused. When your life is about to end, Amitabha Buddha thinks that living being suffered for 7 days reciting my name, and so now I will guide him to the land of ultimate bliss. The time has come. Then Amitabha, with Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva, Mahasthamma Prapta Bodhisattva, and the entire clear, pure, ocean wide assembly of Bodhisattvas appear before you and lead you to the land of ultimate bliss. If you think you can escape, you can't. You are surrounded. At this time, your heart is without inversion. You won't say, I don't want to go. It's too boring there. It would never occur to you to refuse Amitabha's invitation. And so you are born at once in the Western land. Shariputra, the Buddha continues, I see the advantages, so I am explaining them to you. If other living beings in the Saha world hear these doctrines, they should make a vow to be born in that land. Previously, the text said, those living beings who hear should vow, I wish to be born in that country. This passage says, I will be born in that land. That is, I vow that I shall certainly be born in the land of ultimate bliss. Sutra, Shariputra, as I now praise the inconceivable benefit from the merit and virtue of Amitabha, thus in the East are also Yasubya Buddha, Sumeru Appearance of Buddha, Great Sumeru Buddha, Sumeru Light Buddha, Wonderful Sound Buddha, all Buddha such as these, numberless as Ganges and Sands.
in his own country, it brings forth the appearance of a vast and long tongue, everywhere covering the three thousand great thousand words and speaks the sincere and actual words. All you living beings should believe, praise, and hold in reverence the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra of the mindful one of whom all Buddhas are protective. Commentary Not only do I praise the such a wonderful, inconceivable merit and virtue of Amitabha Buddha's beneficial deeds, said Shakyamuni Buddha, but so does Yasubhya Buddha in the East. Yasubhya Buddha of the Vara division in the East is the Buddha who eradicates disaster and lengthens life. His name means unmoving and eternally dwelling Dharma body. His Dharma body does not move and it eternally dwells. Sumeru appearance Buddha. Sumeru means wonderfully high. These Buddha's marks are as lofty as Mount Sumeru. Great Sumeru Buddha, that is great wonderfully high Buddha. Sumeru light Buddha, wonderfully high light Buddha. All Buddhas such as these, the names of a few of the Eastern Buddhas have been mentioned. If one were to speak of them in detail, they would be as numberless as Ganges sense. In his own country, each brings forth the appearance of a vast and long tongue, everywhere covering the three thousand great thousand walls. How can one speak with a tongue like that? This represents the Buddha's drama circulating to all places and the Buddha's sincere and actual words. All of you should believe, praise, and hold in reverence the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra of the mindful ones of whom all Buddhas are protective. The Buddhas are mindful and protective of this sutra, just as they are mindful and protective of the wonderful Dharma Lotus Blossom Sutra. If you read or recite the Amitabha Sutra, the Buddhas of the Ten Directions will happily come to your aid and in the future, when your life is over, they will witness your rebirth in the land of ultimate bliss. Sutra Sariputra in the Southern World are Sun Moon Lamp Buddha, Well-Known Light Buddha, Great Blazing shoulder, Shoulders Buddha, Sumeru Lamp Buddha, Measureless Vigor Buddha, all Buddhas such as these, numberless as Ganges sense. In his own country, each brings forth the appearance of the vast and long tongue, everywhere covering the three thousand great thousand walls and speaks the sincere and actual words. All you living beings should believe, praise, and hold in reverence in the inconceivable merit and virtue of the Sutra of the Mindful One of whom all Buddhas are protective. Commentary After speaking of the Buddhas in the East who praised Amitabha Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha spoke of the Buddhas in the South. Shariputra, he said, In the South as well, there are many, many Buddhas who extend their vast and long tongues to speak about the drama. Who are they? They are Sun Moon Lamp Buddha, well-known light Buddha, great blazing shoulders Buddha, who emits light from his shoulders. Sumeru Lamp Buddha, that is a wonderfully high lamp Buddha, and measureless Vigor Buddha, who is energetic in the six periods of the day and night, as well as other Buddhas in number as grains of sand in the Ganges River. They all extend their vast and long tongues to cover the three thousand great thousand wounds and speak the truth, speak of what is, and do not speak falsely. All living beings, they say, in all lands and all countries, and in all the limitless worlds, should believe, praise, and hold in reverence in the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra. You must bring forth us of real faith, real vows, and real practice. Praise the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra, which Shakyamuni Buddha spoke without request. If you believe, accept, praise, and recite it, all the Buddhas will protect you.
resolve through revere Amitabha Buddha and the Amitabha Sutra. Sutra Shariputra in the Western world are measureless life Buddha, measureless appearance Buddha, measureless curtain Buddha, great light Buddha, great brightness Buddha, jeweled appearance Buddha, pure light Buddha. All Buddha suggest this, numberless as Ganges sends in his own country, which each brings forth the appearance of the vast and long tongue, everywhere covering the three thousand great thousand worlds, and speaks the sincere and actual world. Was actual words, all dual living beings should believe, praise, and hold in reverence the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra of the mindful one of whom all Buddhas are protective. Commentary after speaking of the Buddhas in the East and South who praise Amitabha Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha spoke of the Buddhas in the West, for example, Measureless Life Buddha, who is just Amitabha, the Buddha of Limitless Life. You would recognize him right away. However, there are many Buddhas who have the same name. Measureless Life Buddha might be Amitabha, the teacher in the Western land of ultimate bliss, or it might be some other Buddha. It might be Amitabha Buddha, or it might not be. What if it is? What if it isn't? Don't be attached one way or the other, because there really isn't any is or is not. The Buddha drama is just that wonderful. Which is, which isn't, is and is not are your discriminations. For the Buddha, there is one substance, one unity, and no division between this and that. The Buddha is identical with the way, and each Buddha is identical with every other. Although all Buddhas are the same, they are each adorned with their own individual characteristics. In spite of the differing adornments, they are not like people who become jealous and obstruct each other, saying, Hey, how can you be so mean to me? The Buddha has none of this. You are just me, he says, and I am just you, with no division. Why? Because the Buddha has attained the state of no self, where is and is not are the same. Those who wish to become Buddhas must not have discriminative thoughts, false thoughts, desires, and all longings. They must have nothing at all. This is truly wonderful to the extreme. Do not be attached. If you actually recognize Amitabha Buddha, you won't waste your energy trying to discriminate one limitless life Buddha from another. Measureless appearance Buddha has limitless marks. It is not known how many Buddha marks he has. Measureless curtain Buddha is covered and sheltered by many jeweled curtains. Great light Buddha's light shines everywhere. Great brightness Buddha, jeweled appearance Buddha, and pure light Buddha all have a clear, pure, bright light. Where we to speak of all the Buddhas who are such as these in detail, they would be as numerous as the grains of sand in the Ganges River. All the Buddhas in the western land of ultimate bliss and in the many Buddha worlds extend their gigantic tongues. Now, when we extend our tongues, they can't even cover a room, but the tongues of the Buddhas cover the entire 3,000 great thousand world systems. Why? For them, the 3,000 great thousand world systems are just one thought, and one thought is just the 3,000 great thousand worlds. 3,000 great thousand worlds are not beyond one thought, and the Buddha's tongue covers them all. Don't be attached to the idea that the Buddha's tongue is actually that big. If it were, his speech would be clumsy. The appearance of the Buddha's vast and long tongue indicates that wherever there is drama, the Buddha's tongue is there too. It is not for certain that our tongues are small. We too can extend our vast and long tongues and cover the three thousand great thousand worlds, speaking the Dharma and causing it to circulate. When you hear the Buddha Dharma, don't be attached. 
Ottawa town covers the 3,000 great thousand walls. There is not even a mote of dust. There is basically nothing at all. Nothing, you ask? Then was the Buddha lying? If the Buddha did not lie, how could you believe him? From the point of view of living beings, if seen, it seems to be a lie, but from the point of view of the Buddha, it is true, real speech, not false speech, not a lie. Living beings see it as a lie, and the Buddha sees it as the truth. It's the same speech, but when the Buddha speaks it, it's true, and when living beings speak it, it's a lie. This point is not easy to understand. If you want to be clear about this doctrine, do not fear suffering or difficulty. Work hard. You can't just study for two and a half days and then think that you have mastered the work. You can't stop listening to sutras or reciting the Buddha's name. Don't pretend to be investigating dhyana by doing nothing at all and saying, I know what the Buddha said. There's not much to it, really. I have studied for about five years and it is all like that, not very interesting. So now I study nothing at all and it's a great improve, improvement. I don't have nearly so many problems. Such talk is not very principled. Wouldn't you say? You should know that Shakyamuni Buddha cultivated blessings and wisdom for three Asamkhya compass by practicing giving and studying the Buddha Dharma. He cultivated his fine characteristics for a hundred great compass and as a consequence, he has the 32 marks and 80 minor characteristics of a Buddha. Why don't we have a single mark? Why do people look at you and say, he is so ugly, keep away from him, he is no good, you can tell by looking at him. So some people make you angry on sight. Why? It is because they don't cultivate and they have no virtuous conduct and it shows up in their appearance. The Buddha's tongue then covers the entire universe and speaks the truth. The Buddha does not treat and he does, he does not lie. Do not try to fathom the sage's wisdom with your ordinary opinions. Don't try to measure the sage's mind with your common mind. Haven't I always told you that the first level bodhisattvas don't know the realm of the second level bodhisattvas and tenth level bodhisattvas don't know the realm of equal enlightenment bodhisattvas. First stage ahats don't know the realms of second stage ahats and second stage ahats don't know the realm of third stage ahats. First stage Stage Ahas may think that they are doing things correctly, but from the point of view of second stage Ahas, they may be wrong. Second stage Ahas may think they are right, but the third stage Ahas may look at them and say, You are off just a little bit. I am your teacher, and you can't know my real. If you knew, you wouldn't need a teacher. So reflect upon what I say. Don't complain. He's just talking. This world is very dangerous. The only reason you haven't disintegrated in the sea of suffering is because the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are protecting you. Sutra Shariputra in the northern world are blazing shoulders Buddha, most victorious sound Buddha, hard to endure Buddha, sunbirth Buddha, net brightness Buddha. All Buddha suggests this, numberless as Ganges said, is in his own country. It brings forth the appearance of a vast and long tongue, everywhere covering the other three thousand great thousand walls, and speaks this sincere and actual, world, actual words. All dual living beings should believe, praise, and hold in reverence the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra of the mindful one of whom all Buddhas are protective. Commentary Not only are the Buddhas in the East, South, and West appraising Amitabha Buddha, but those in the North praise him as well. Great blazing shoulders Buddha emits light from his shoulders. Most victorious South Buddha has a spectacular sound which is heard throughout the 3,000 great thousand worlds. Then why haven't I heard it, you ask? 
you aren't in that world system of 3,000 great thousand worlds. If you were, of course you would hear it, but you are in this world system, not that one. Has the injured Buddha cannot be destroyed. No one can defame his Buddha drama. You should hold in reverence the inconceivable merit and virtue, for it is most wonderful. Were the merit and virtue conceivable, it would have a limit. The sutra's merit and virtue is without a limit, and so it is the sutra of the mindful one, a form all Buddhas are protective. Because its merit and virtue is very wonderful, it is the sutra of which all Buddhas are mindful and protective. Because it is a sutra of which all Buddhas are mindful and protective, its meritorious virtue is extremely wonderful. Now I shall quit speaking, and that is also wonderful. Were I to keep talking, it wouldn't be wonderful. Sutra, Shariputra, in the world below, a lion Buddha, well-known Buddha, famous light Buddha, Dharma Buddha, Dharma curtain Buddha, Dharma maintaining Buddha, all Buddha suggest this, numberless as Genji sense, in his own country, each brings forth the appearance of a vast and long tongue. Everywhere covering the three thousand great thousand worlds, and with the sincere and actual words, all Jew living beings should believe, praise, and hold in reverence in the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra of the mindful one of whom all Buddhas are protective. Commentary. Having spoken of the Buddhas in the north, east, south, and west, Shakyamuni Buddha again says to Shariputra, In the world below, there is a Buddha named Lion, Lion who speaks the drama with the lion's roar. Well-known light Buddha's name has been heard by everyone in the triple world. Famous light Buddha's light, as well as his fame, shines everywhere within the triple world. Dharma curtain Buddha has a jeweled Dharma curtain. Dharma maintaining Buddha exclusively opposes the Buddha drama. You can explain his name in two ways. The first is that there is such a Buddha in the world below. The second is that you know you who now the principle 162 proper receive, maintain and recite the Amitabha Sutra will in the future become Dhamma maintaining Buddha. Sutra Shariputra in the world above, a pure thought Buddha, king of past lives Buddha, superior fragrance Buddha, fragrant light Buddha, great blazing shoulders Buddha, very colored jewels and flower adornment body Buddha, solitary king Buddha, Jude flower virtual Buddha vision and of all meaning Buddha such as Mount Sumeru Buddha, all Buddha such as these, numberless as Genji sense in his own country, each brings forth the appearance of the vast and long tongue, everywhere covering the three thousand great thousand worlds and speaks the sincere and actual words. All you living beings should believe, praise, and hold in reverence the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra of the mindful one of whom all Buddhas are protective. Commentary Pure South Buddha's sound is clear, pure, and resonant. King of past lives, Buddha, in past lives made great and powerful vows. If you light incense, superior fragrance Buddha will appear and the fragrant light Buddha will emit light as in the southern world. In the world above, there is also a Buddha called Great Blazing Shoulders. This light from his shoulders represents the two kinds of wisdom, provisional and real. Very colored jewels and flower adornment body Buddha adorns the virtue of his supreme attainment with the causal flowers of the 10,000 practices. Sala tree King Buddha. The Sala tree is found in India. Sala means solid and durable. No water can wash this tree away, just as nothing can destroy the Buddha's Dharma body. The Buddha then is like 
the Sala Tree. Sutra Sariputra, what do you think? Why is it called Sutra of the Mindful One of whom all Buddhas are protective? Sariputra, if a good man or good woman hears this sutra and holds to it, and hears the names of all these Buddhas, this good man or woman will be the mindful one of whom all Buddhas are protective and will irreversibly attain to a Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Therefore, Shariputra, all of you should believe and accept my words and those which all Buddhas speak. Commentary Having praised the Buddhas of the Six Directions, Shari, a Shakyamuni Buddha asks, Shariputra, in your opinion, why is this sutra called the Sutra of the Mindful One of whom all Buddhas are protective? This section of the sutra then discusses the sutra's name. Shariputra just stared blankly. Shakyamuni Buddha waited in silence for about five minutes and then he said, I will tell you, Shariputra, if there is a good man or a good woman, one who maintains the five precepts and cultivates the ten good deeds, who can receive, maintain, recite from memory, and not forget the names of the Buddha just mentioned, that good man or woman will be the mindful one of whom all Buddhas are protective. Not only will the Buddhas of the six directions come to his aid, but the Buddhas of all ten directions will support him. He will further attain to irreversibly a position, thought and conduct with respect to the attainment of the utmost right and perfect enlightenment, Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Therefore, Shariputra, all of you should believe and accept my words and those which all Buddhas speak. Do you see how extremely compassionate the Buddha is? We should be grateful to the point of tears and pay attention where the Buddha says, All of you, adults and children as well, should believe and accept what I tell you. You should also believe and accept what I explain to you now. Don't have doubts. Don't say, when it comes right down to it, I don't know if the Chinese drama master's doctrines are correct. You should believe what I say. You should also believe what Shakyamuni Buddha says and what all the Buddhas praise as the inconceivable merit and virtue of the Sutra of the mindful one of whom of Buddhas are protective. Believe me when I say that these Sutra's doctrines are true, real, and not false. You are certainly not being treated, so vow to be born in the land of ultimate bliss. Sutra, Shariputra, if there are people who have already made the vow, who now make the vow and who are about to make the vow, I desire to be born in a Mitabas country. These people, whether born in the past, now being born, or to be born in the future, all will irreversibly attain to a Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Therefore, Shariputra, all good men and good women, if they are among those who have faith, should make the vow, I will be born in that country. Commentary There sat Shariputra, sound asleep. Shariputra, Shariputra, wake up, said the Buddha. Those who have already vowed to be born in the land of ultimate bliss have most certainly been born there. Those who now vow to be born there, and those who make the vow in the future will be born there in the future. But in order to make vows, you must have faith. Faith, vows, and practice are the three prerequisites for cultivation of the pure land Dharma door. First, believe there is a land of ultimate bliss. Secondly, have faith in Amitabha Buddha. Thirdly, believe that you and Amitabha Buddha have a great karmic affinity and that you can certainly be born in the land of ultimate bliss. With faith in these three things, you may then make the vow. I desire to be born in Amitabha's country. There is a saying, I want to be born in the pure western land. I want to be born there. Nobody is forcing me to go. Nobody is dragging me there. 
All the way Mr. Babu that has come to guide me. I'm going as a volunteer because I want to be close to him. I want to be born in the land of ultimate bliss and to see a Mr. Babu when my lotus flower opens. I want to meet the Buddha and hear the Dharma. These are the vows you need. Then you must practice. How? Recite the Buddha's name, saying Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha, as if you were trying to save your head from the executioner, running ahead to keep your head like the sixth patriarch. He knew that after his death, someone would try to steal his head, and so he told his disciples to take precautions. When he died, they wrapped his neck with sheets of iron. When the thief tried to cut off his head, he couldn't do it. The great master, the sixth patriarch, protected his head, even after he had entered the stillness of Nirvana. How much the more should we, who have not entered the stillness, protect our heads by cultivating the recitation of the Buddha's name? Reciting the Buddha's name is actual practice. Faith, vows, and practice are the travel expenses for rebirth in the land of ultimate bliss. They are your ticket. All those who vow to be born in the land of ultimate bliss can attain irreversible position, thought and conduct with respect to the utmost right and perfect enlightenment. All those who believe should make the vow, and this is an order. No kidding around. I will be born in that country. If you make this vow, you can be born in the land of ultimate bliss. Sutra, Shariputra, just as I now praise the inconceivable merit and virtue of all Buddhas, all those Buddhas equally praise my inconceivable merit and virtue, saying these words. Shakyamuni Buddha can complete extremely rare and difficult deeds in the Saha land, in the evil time of the five turbidities, in the midst of the compact turbidity, the view turbidity, the affliction turbidity, the view the living beings turbidity, and the life turbidity, he can attain a nutarasamyak samudhi, and for the sake of living beings, speak this drama which in the whole world is hard to believe. Commentary Shariputra said the Buddha, I will tell you some more good news. As I now praise the Buddhas in the six directions and the inconceivable merit and virtue of this sutra, all the Buddhas also praise me and my inconceivable merit and virtue. Shakyamuni Buddha, they say, can complete extremely rare and difficult deeds. He is truly outstanding, truly rare. Why? He can do what man cannot do, deeds which are extremely rare and wonderful. Shakya means able to be human, and Moni means still and silent. The Buddha humanly teaches and converts living beings and silently returns the light within to cultivate samadhi. The humanness is movement and the silence is stillness. He moves and yet is always still. He accords with conditions and yet never changes. For him there is nothing conditioned, nothing unconditioned. Nothing done and nothing left undone. Shakyamuni Buddha is inconceivable. In the Saha world, where one enjoys no bliss but endures every kind of suffering, living beings endure a great deal. They undergo the bitterness unaware that they are suffering. In the evil time of the five turbidities, there are five turbidities in the Saha world and they are just terrible. The reason we don't realize Buddhahood is because we are stuck in the five turbidities as if in quicksand and can't pull ourselves out. When we lift one leg, the other leg sinks deeper, and when we lift that leg, the first goes down. There's really no escape. But Shakyamuni Buddha is talented. With his great spiritual powers, he can teach you to live right out of the five turbidities in a shana, a mere instant of time. At night, when we recite the great transference of merit, we say, 
leaving the five tributaries in Asana and arriving at the lotus pool in the flick of a wrist. Like a talented magician, Shakyamuni Buddha leaves the five tributaries, which are the Kampa Tabiditi, Kampa that is Tam, is Tabit. It arises dependent upon the four other turbidities which increase daily, growing bigger and more extreme. That is to say, the turbidity of time is created with the help of the view turbidity, the affliction turbidity, the living beings turbidity, and the life turbidity, and takes the growth of the first four as its basic substance. It takes the unceasing flaming as its mark for like a flaming fuel, the more it burns, the higher it blazes. The view turbidity. The view turbidity takes the five quick servants as its basic substance. The five quick servants are the view of a body, the view of extremes, dragon views, the view of grasping at views, and the view of prohibitive morality. It takes mystic wisdom and cattle morality as its mark. Seeing a dog, a cat, or a cow reborn in the heavens, some people imitate their conduct so that they may be reborn there too. With devon knowledge and views, they take the genuine doctrine to extremes. The affliction turbidity. The affliction turbidity takes the five dawn servants, greed, hatred, stupidity, pride, and doubt as its basic substance, and the irritation of afflictions as its mark. The living beings turbidity. The living beings turbidity takes the combination of the three conditions of father, mother, and one's own karma as its basic substance. It takes the unceasing turning of the will of rebirth as its mark. After the three conditions combine, the will revolves without stopping back and forth. This life you are named John, and next life Lee. This life. You are a bhikshu, and next life you are a bhikshuni. Bhikshus come become bhikshunis, and bhikshunis turn to bhikshus. Isn't this amazing? It really is. The life turbidity. The life turbidity takes the reception of warmth as its basic substance, and the decline and extinction of the lifespan as its mark. From youth to middle age, on the on to old age and death. This is the mark of life. Sutra, Shariputra, you should know that I, in the evil time of the five turbidities, practice these difficult deeds, attain anuttara samyak samudhi, and for all the world, speak this drama, difficult to believe, extremely difficult. Sutra, after the Buddha spoke this sutra, Shariputra, and all the bhikshus. All the gods, men, and asuras, and others from all the worlds, hearing what the Buddha had said, joyously welcomed, faithfully accepted, bowed, and withdrew. And at the Buddha speaks of Amitabha Sutra. Commentary: You should know that in the midst of the five turbidities, Shakyamuni Buddha attains the utmost right and perfect enlightenment, and then speaks about the drama which people find very difficult to believe. This drama is most difficult to believe, extremely difficult, really hard to believe," says Shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha says it's hard, but I say it's easy. Shakyamuni Buddha just said it's hard. It's not hard, really. All you need to do is recite Namo Amitabha Buddha. Just go ahead and recite. Wouldn't you say that is easy? No trouble at all. It doesn't cost a thing, and it takes no effort or time. It's an extremely easy Buddha drama. After the Buddha spoke the Amitabha Sutra, the greatly wise Shariputra and all the great bhikshus, all the ones with its god and men, as well as the eight classes of supernatural beings, gods, dragons, yaksa ghosts, Gandavas, asuras, gaduras. Garudas, Kinaras, and Mahuragas, hearing what the Buddha had said, joyously welcomed, faithfully accepted, bowed, and withdrew. 
They bowed reverently to Shakyamuni Buddha to thank him for speaking the Amitabha Sutra and for teaching and transforming living beings. At that time, all the great Ahas bowed to the Buddha out of gratitude for having heard this drama. We, now hearing this supreme, deep, subtle and wonderful drama, have certainly planted great gurus in ages past. Consequently, we have a great affinity with Amitabha Buddha and as a result, have been fortunate enough to hear the Amitabha Sutra and to recite the Buddha's name. This is very rare.